day, May 15th, Sunday, 7.23 here, Pacific time, you know, Phoenix, Arizona, which my goodness, the Suns against the Mavs, what happened? Anyways, today, brand new discovery, William S. Crowdy has a book and it dates to 1902 one of the pioneers of hebrew Israelism has a book we're going to be looking at it tonight you will you were going to enjoy this all right let's get started street apologetics let's go Okay, sorry I got started a little bit late. I know t I told Nate I was going to try to move it forward, but my bad. Anyways, we are here now, and we're going to do it. People say they've been enjoying these series or been, you know, taking a deep dive into the history of Hebrew Israelism. Really, when we're talking about this, it is appropriately labeled Black Israelism because there's no 12 tribes chart and all that is strictly Black Israelism. It is what it is. And in fact, these folks even call themselves Black Jews. And a lot of people know about William S. Crowdy. In fact, in my book, I have a little bit of history on Hebrew Israelites. And in this book, I say a little something. Let me go ahead and read here from page 27 and see what I say here. Okay. Uh, this is about Crowdy. Oh, what? How did that happen? I think, I think the dog hit something. I think the dog hit something. I don't know why it's doing that. Hold on just a second. <laughs> okay. Let's see here what it says. All right. Even though this wave of Hebrew Israelites traces back its ideological roots to 1969 at One West in Harlem, they were not the first black Americans to claim to be ethnic Israelites. All Hebrew Israelites believe there is an inevitable awakening, an inevitable awakening happening as individuals come to the knowledge about their true heritage as God's chosen people. Some believe the first eyelid began crap cracking open in 1896. And notice I'm saying this is a Hebrew Israelite belief, right? Oh, okay. And here's what it says. This is a quote from author Ella Hughley. She says, or he says, I, I think it's a she, but I'm not 100% sure. And here's a uh, prophecy of Ezekiel 37 and many others began their modern day fulfillment in 1896 when a prophet of the Almighty God, William Saunders Crowdy, resurrected and reestablished the House of Israel in Lawrence, Kansas. End quote. Now, that is an incorrect quote in two ways, uh, meaning I quoted the book properly, but Hughley is incorrect. It did not take place in Lawrence, Kansas. In Lawrence, Kansas, it took place in Guthrie, Oklahoma. Number one, number two, he was not the first. Reverend William Christian was the first, but nonetheless, he's a pioneer and is often credited for being the first. It's true, Crowdy was one of the first people to clearly expound this idea in a serious way. What exactly? What exactly happened with Crowdy, 1847 to 1908, in 1896? Question mark. According to the Church of God and Saints of Christ website, the church he officially founded on November 8, 1896. This is the account. So now I'm reading from the Church of God and Saints of Christ account. All right. One day, while felling trees, the hand and the spirit of the Lord were heavy upon him. He heard a voice telling him to run for his life. He became disturbed and fled into the woods, thinking that he was going to die. It was during his sojourn in the wild that the Almighty God revealed to prophet William S. Crowdy the ancient plan of salvation as taught by Moses and the other biblical prophets. Those same truths which the former prophets had fostered were heralded again by this prophet God. The Sabbath, Saturday, the Passover, the Hebrew calendar, the Day of Atonement, and above all, the Ten Commandments of the Sinai Revelation. Stop right there. If you were with me when I did the Reverend William Christian book, which dates to 1896 and is actually the first Hebrew Israelite book, he could be called the father of black Israelism. Uh, that book, uh, he was a little bit more... Christian, just kind of Baptist, with this message about Jews or black, black folks or Jews. That's the way he put it, basically. Crowdy is a little bit more Judaic in his orientation, and I don't know if he can be more Masonic than Christian, but he may be more Masonic because he instituted 
reforms about the way people dress. And I'm going to show you a video of Crowley's people in the modern era, and you're going to see what I mean. Okay, continuing on. As he strove to reestablish this doctrine and gather the lost sheep of the house of Israel, he met with much opposition from some of his listeners and from some of the civil authorities. While preaching on the streets, he was arrested 22 times. However, he continued the mission on which he had been sent. End quote. Hughley and others like her believe the work of awakening Israelites to their true heritage began in 1896 with Crowdy and continues to this day. There is debate about whether the modern camps are truly continuing the same trajectory trajectory began by Crowdy. Although the post-60s groups, especially IUIC, link what they do with Crowdy, it is not a true straight line from dot to dot. Crowdy was not as radical as many of the modern groups and even had black and white followers. In fact, uh, let me show you a picture here real quick before I get into the book, which I have uploaded in the Christian and Hebrews Light discussion group. And so I encourage people to go ahead and check that out. Uh, I think you'll appreciate it there. Okay. Let me see if I can get this uh, picture here. This may be it. No, that's not the one. Hold on. Just give me a second. I got a picture of a white bishop. Okay. And it's interesting. Some of Crowdy's modern day followers believe that this white bishop was actually supposed to be the successor to Crowdy. Kind of a fascinating thing, right? Imagine, imagine that. And I believe his name was Grove. And, and I have a picture of Grove, and I'm going to show it right now. Okay, just want to make, it's not a great picture, as you can imagine. These are very old items, but I do have a picture from Grove I'm going to put on the screen, okay? Take a look at that. Look at that date right there, 1904. Uh, but that uh, that is according to modern adherents, according to the group's archives. That is a picture of Grove, who was an early Crowdy convert and uh, was a very important in the organization. You will see him mentioned if you study the group's history. And again, why is this group important? Because they are the second Hebrews alike group that we know of in America. And Crowdy probably did more to actually spread black Israelism than Reverend William Christian, although Reverend William Christian was first. So that is Grove. I'm going to continue on reading about this. <clears throat> One informed commentator believes Crowdy would be appalled by these attempts to link him with the current manifestation of Hebrewism. A visit to the IUIC website shows they are clearly trying to link themselves to Crowdy's work, but some people who identify as Hebrews Light strongly disagree. Now I'm quoting a Hebrews Light author here, quote, I noticed in the last two years that they have now been creating charts in which they trace themselves back to Crowdy. Crowdy's group disavows everything that they're about because Crowdy's first followers, as an ex-slave who maintained this tradition, his fo first followers were actually white, so he's diametrically opposed to everything they stand for. Now that quote comes from a Hebrews Light who actually went on with Michael Brown, if you know him, Messianic Jewish Christian. His name is difficult for me to pronounce, Sar... Sharhat Messiahu. When Messiah Okay, there we go. And so um I talk about him there and uh and I think that's an interesting quote and he's actually right about that. I briefly talk about Warren Roberson and I briefly talked about F. S. Cherry as well, and then go on to Wentworth Math Matthews briefly and, and Arnold Josiah Ford. I did not really know very much about Reverend William Christian at the time. He is not included in the first edition of this book, of which I'm going to update uh, in the next year or so, and it's going to be retitled um, uh, simply, Who Are the Hebrew Israelites? And you're going to see something about Reverend William Christian, Christian in there and that one. Okay, so there's some background, and before, before we start, let me go ahead and actually show you uh, a modern-day version of Crowdy's group. This is them singing a song. Prophet we miss Crowdy, he was sent to rule all nations with the rod. It is the word of God that searches every heart. Sinner men enter into the heart. Prophet we miss Crowdy. He was sent to rule all nations with a rod. It is the word of God that searches every heart. Sinner men enter into the heart. Prophet witness Crowdy, he was sent to rule all nations with a rod. It is the word of God. 
searches every heart. Sinner man is ready to the heart. The voice of God is calling you to come. Okay, I do appreciate their music there. And that's a little bit of a sample. You know what? Um, I think I should play one other song. Or maybe, you know what? Let me play a prayer. This is a brief prayer where modern day here is talking about Crowdy, because I think it's important to understand a few things. Crowdy is still important. The Church of God and Saints of Christ is consciously uh, a continuation of what Crowdy started. Now, there's different groups of them, so it gets a little confusing, but I think uh, everything I'm talking about today is from the main body, okay? There has been splits similar with Christians group. But they have done a much better job than a later uh, group, which you would think the later group would have better success at keeping track of things. That's F.S. Cherry's group, who claim to be first, but as I showed Saturday in my interview with Shelton Henderson, Cherry fudged the data, okay? It is incorrect that he started in 1886 because he was only 11 years old, and there's no evidence they were ever in Tennessee. So if you're following the trajectory of the beginning of Hebrew Israelism, it goes Christian, then Crowdy, okay? And I think there's even more before Cherry, although Cherry was significant and important uh, nonetheless. Um, now, let me show uh, this prayer where they uh, talk about Crowdy. Let's check this out here. Do we put our trust, nor upon angels do we rely, because, Father, we only rely on you and you alone. On this Sabbath day and also reestablishment day, we would be in grace if we did not thank you for Prophet William Saunders Crowdy. When we think about this prophet, we do rejoice. We rejoice for his coming. We rejoice for his receiving. And we rejoice for his anointing. We thank you for giving him life. If it had not been for Prophet William Saunders Crowdy, where would we be? Thank you, dear God, for pouring your spirit into him so he could tell us all things we should do. Through you, Lord, he was able to set forth the plan of salvation so that we may follow and have life more abundantly. His teachings that came from you are still pertinent and precious in 2020, just as they were over 100 years ago. Thank you, Lord, for giving us hope, for displaying courage, for enduring strength, and showing us agape love through Prophet William Saunders Crowley. We are forever changed by his steadfastness and nourished by his life's example. We are thankful that somebody on our family tree had the spiritual ear to hear the prophet's call and passed it down from generation to generation. Thus is the reason we are here and we are forever grateful to thee. Lord, we thank you and we ask you that you be, we ask that you be with all the participants on today's program. Set aside every weight that easily besets them. Allow your spirit to permeate. All right, so that kind of gives you an idea of uh, modern day adherence, right? Of what's going on there with Crowdy's uh, organization in the modern era. And there you notice huh, the law. And um, yeah, I believe that is where, you know, you have the law on your, on your heart and, uh, you know, your head. I believe that that is what that is. So, you know, more, more, if you look up Reverend William Christian's group in the modern era, Church of the Living God, you'll notice that they really just like look very much like Southern traditional Christians, okay? This group uh, is more self-consciously different, influenced by uh, the era of Masonry, frankly, and also um, Judaism a little bit more. And here's what's interesting is, you know, you listen to that prayer, notice how centered it was on William S. Crowdy as a prophet. So, he is still very uh, looms very large in in the in the Church of God and Saints of Christ's uh, collective memory, which which the good thing about that is, although it is um, I think undue honor to a man, I think that's kind of obvious. The good thing about it is they're much better at keeping records and writing biographies, and so. This book was written in 2021. This is not the oldest book. This is just a book by his folks that just, this is not, this just came out. The Truth He Brought, William S. Crowdy, a prophet of God. It's written by a lawyer, and she is a fourth generation member of the community. 
And just in case you're wondering what Crowdy looks like here, let me show you here. This is Crowdy. A lot of you have seen a picture of him. He has a distinctive mustache in a lot of his pictures. And uh, that is, of course, him a little bit older. There's not a ton of pictures of him when he was younger. They do tend to be when he was older. But he usually has that mustache. Um, so here you see the kind of, first of all, you saw the song, which you guys seem to appreciate. But notice how centered it was on Crowdy. And now you see the prayer. You know, I'm going to play one other song by them because you guys seem to enjoy that. And then we do need to get into this book which I have uploaded to the Christian and Hebrew Israelite Gospel Discussion Group. And uh, the website uh, URL, I'm going to put in the live chat, but it's facebook.com slash groups slash capital G-A-L, so GAL 616, that stands for Galatians 616, slash files. you got to go into the file section look for a book called Revelation of God Revealed, because that is the title of the book, Revelation of God Revealed. And uh, you know what? You're just going to need to give me just one second, and I'm going to put that in there. Now, if you're not a member of the group, you will have to request to be a member of the group, okay? Uh, but uh, the mods are good. We got BK. He's in the house. Crow. Link to Crowdy's 1902 book. Okay. There it is. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and upload. That's now in the live chat. I'm going to pin that so everybody can see it. Now you can download the book for yourself. Let me play another song. And, and as I do, I want to under explain to you what's going on. This is when they celebrate something called Reestablishment Day. And this will help to have some background information about what was going on at the time. What was going on at the time? There was these movements that scholars of religion now have classified as restorationist movements, restorationist movements. The impulse itself may be called restorationism. And within race, restorationism, the basic thesis was people had this sense, this longing that there was something in the modern, mainly Christian or Protestant denominations, but maybe perhaps across the board with all religion. But in America, you're going to mainly be talking about Protestant denominations that was missing is, is as if some Something about the original message need to be restored, and people wanted to get back to that time. And so people, uh, um, as part of sort of kind of folk Christianity, folk Protestantism, had dreams or visions that they would report or something similar. And a lot of times it had to do with restoring what that original message was. If you, and a lot of times they may say it came through a dream or a vision or a voice or an urging or through automatic writing, or perhaps through um, a sensation, or something they discovered, like Joseph Smith, you know, not only had the appearances, but says he discovered the golden plates, right? And this kind of thing was common, Charles Taze Russell, you know, by studying pyramids and studying the Bible. Uh, and so this is the kind of thing that we see in these restorationist movements. Well, at the tail end of that came black Israelism. And so Crowdy says he has visions, and uh, this same thing happened. And so the point of me saying all that is that this is during what's called Restoration Sunday, where they, uh, I'm sorry, did I say Restoration? They don't call it Restoration, that's what scholars call it. They call it Reestablishment Day. And during Reestablishment Sunday, they recognize their history. Uh, and in that, and I'm not necessarily criticizing that, I do criticize the undue bordering on worship of Crowdy. Now, they would not say they worship Crowdy, I understand that. But Listen to this, and I think you'll understand what I mean. I'm going to play this song, okay? And then we are going to get into this book, okay? This song is beautiful, by the way. I think you guys are going to enjoy it.
us out of darkness. So, I mean, they're saying Crowdy brought them out of darkness. You hear that? He brought us out of darkness. Someone said, shout out to Deacon Scari. I don't think he's in the live chat, although he may be snooping around. But let me let me say something real quick here. Uh, he had claimed, and I put this on a on a community post on my on my YouTube channel, that he had found the oldest Hebrew Israelite book ever written. Um, that's I guess what he thought, and uh, you know he was very uh, kind of elated about saying we're the real scholars here, and that's fine. You know I'm not about I don't get down like they get down. Right, their ways are carnal, frankly. But he has been proven wrong twice, okay? He's been proven wrong twice. Reverend William Christian's book was written in 1896. I brought it out last Sunday. Here we are on the second Sunday in a row. I'm bringing out a book that was published in 1902. And so the book that he brought out, which came out like in 1925, now he says it was dated from 1905, uh, is not the oldest book. Now, I'm still glad that he found it. You know, I'm still glad that he brought it out. In fact, I may want to cover it next week or a week coming up here soon. He's already covered it, but it needs some Christian apologetic analysis, obviously. Let me play this, and I know you guys will enjoy, the, enjoy these harmonies. But before he came, he was called into the wilderness for driven the woods by the mysterious voice that's his account he says that he heard voices there is a younger picture of crowdy that that is a rare picture of him as a somewhat younger man there by the way so they are they are accurately summarizing what he says happened and I, I just want you to pay attention to this because, you know, these folks go back far within the scope of Hebrewism. You know, some of these Hebrews like groups literally started two years ago and have no sense of history. And they need some elders to set them straight, you know, straight up, to be honest. And, um, you know, I mentioned how uh, the voice told him to run, to run, you know. So they are accurately summarizing what he reported to them. Run, 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 run for your life. Run, 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 run for your life. Run, 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 run for your life. Look his eggs and blaze the trees with hopes that someone else would find his body. Now you probably can't hear what they said, but... They're talking about, he says that he marked the trees with his axe because he didn't think he, he was going to be able to kind of make it out, and he wanted people to be able to find him. So, you know, mark the trees with the axe so they could find, like, a trail where he was. That's what they were just referring to there. Um, let's go ahead and time out. Time out uh, this person. Uh, who was it? Spanish Soldier 2000. Time them out. And Israelites in exile— they're going to, uh, we're, we're going to time you out, but you can come back, Israelites in Exile, because you and I have had a nice dialogue, and I appreciate that, uh, even though you took down the video later. And uh, let me know your next time in Phoenix. I'll take you out to dinner, my treat 100%, and anyone you would like to invite as well, okay? I'm serious. We, we, we would go somewhere where they do not serve pork, okay? You just need to let me know, and I will do that. And I, we will have a very respectful dialogue. doesn't need to be recorded, but you let me know dinner is on me, my friend. But for now, you're going to get timed out because you're saying the guy was a Christian patriot. I knew someone was going to bring this up, so let's go ahead and put it on the screen. You're interrupting the melodies, but let me just get into this real quick. Let me say something about this briefly. I knew someone was going to say this. Uh, check this out. Here's the deal. I have procured a copy of this Murderer's Manifesto. The things I had to do and the places I had to go to get it 
have left a stain on my mind, and I am not making a joke right now. I had to see some stuff on the internet that I wish I never saw to, 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 to track this thing down. It's disgusting through and through. The environs are gross, and the stuff in here is repugnant. I have sent this manifesto by this mass murderer to some of my friends. I would like to have them on it for a joint program to cover this. However, some of my friends are slow, God bless their hearts, and if they're not able to hurry up and analyze it, then I may do a solo show on this issue. This is not normally the kind of thing I cover. However, one reason I want to cover it is because there are similar strands of anti-Semitism in what this man wrote about why he wanted to go kill people that show up within Hebrew Israelites. Now, obviously, the man was a white supremacist and hated black folks, and really not just black folks, but Jews and any kind of uh, immigrants to this country, uh, according to his perspective, right? And uh, it's a pretty gross thing. I'm debating how to do it, and I'm also debating what YouTube will do if I go through it on the screen. I They may take the video down, and so I'm debating if I'm going to show it when I go through it. I may need to go through it without showing it to you to increase the likelihood people will see it because I, I don't know about that kind of thing yet. I don't know the rules on that. But – Hold your horses on that, and I'm going to work on it. No, the shooting was yesterday. It happened in Buffalo, and as some of you know, my Italian family does not come from New York City. My Sicilian family comes from the larger Buffalo area. And so I'm not acting like I knew people in the supermarket, okay? I'm just saying I have some personal ties to Buffalo. That's why you see sometimes see me wear the Buffalo Bills hat, uh, not because I necessarily am in love with the, buff, the Bills, but because of personal ties to Buffalo. And... Uh, it's a disgusting, wicked, awful, horrible, treacherous, evil, sinful thing that he did. And uh, he is going to face some very serious consequences in the next life. And he has sent people into eternity forever. It's a very serious thing. It's a murder. And we're going to talk about it sometime this week. Oh, yeah, I know about the other shooting today at the Presbyterian Church. Uh, Nate, the shooting that you're talking about today was at a Presbyterian church in California. It was at a Korean church, but the man who shot was also a Korean. He was a Korean man in his 60s. So it was a, a retirement community that he was shooting at. And so most likely it was someone who knew people there, may have been a former member. But the Korean man who was in his 60s who killed some people in the peace, it was a PCA church, Presbyterian Church of America, largely Korean American uh, uh, adherents. Now we need to go on and finish this, okay? to temporarily time you out because your comment makes it sound like you're someone who's going to do the whole false flag thing and I just got to tell you I don't have a lot of patience for that you know another thing for the media to use to divide us as plebes How, you know people are dead because someone wanted to quote defend the white race and that's all you're thinking about I mean the guy really killed people what, what do you mean? Like the, the some of the, I just don't understand the internet sometimes. You guys like need to think about what you're saying. You know what you do. You know, imagine going to the grocery store and never coming back because some racist decided to shoot it up. You know, come on, man. Okay, okay. You, uh, you people are testing my patience. I, I, Oregon D. You notice how the media didn't say the. Well, Wisconsin massacre wasn't racially motivated. The media did too point out that, first of all, who the man was. I talked about it, not like I'm part of the mass media, mainstream media. Time Oregon D out too. You guys st stick on topic, okay? You guys st stick on topic and get your comments straight. I'm just not going to put up with this, with the Buffalo stuff, people bringing other stuff up and, and whining and complaining. Like, oh, look. 
The media did bring out the man was influenced by Hebrew Israelism. Organ D. I don't know what you're talking about. I pay attention to these things, so I saw it. Okay? Okay. Spanish Soldier 2000 is blocked from the channel. And it's not the word reprobate that was the problem. It was the other stuff that you said was the problem. But Spanish Soldier, you are blocked. I have a feeling I'm going to be blocking people today. Okay, mods, mods, listen. Anyone who shows uh, uh, any kind of sympathy with this whole false flag and, oh, the media, time them out, warn them, and then block them if they're going to talk about something else. I need to do this, and if you're not interested, then go somewhere else. Please, go somewhere else. Someone else is, that will meet your perspective, that will make you happy, that will give you confirmation bias, okay? Go somewhere else. That's not what I'm doing. I already told you what I'm going to do. I have the manifesto. I'm going to go through it. Just come on. Katachan. Katachan. Where where did you racists come from? I'm used to Hebrew is a lot of racist, but where do the rest of these racists come from? And these so-called red pill people. Where did where did you come from? My goodness. God said Sodom and I send thee to the children of things there notice how he claims again and again that he's god sent prophet he called himself the world's evangelist and he says to the nation of israel because they need to be re uh, restored right reestablished is the word there but notice this it says and to all nations and they show a picture of the world and then they don't mean it in the way one westers mean it remember crowdy had a lot of white followers and uh this is not a classically defined bigoted group in fact there's evidence they didn't even do the whole you fake Jews thing. Now, I don't know about now what they do with that or how they say that now, but Crowdy, in, his, in, in one of his recollections in a 1955 book I have, referred to a Jewish man as a Jew and doesn't give any slur. So they may have felt like there's room enough for both of them. All right. <laughs> That is an old picture. I, I'm surprised they had this. This is where he... That's a really old picture. Crowdy studied the Bible while a trooper and became a preacher. That's an old picture from a newspaper. So he... Crowdy uh, had a, a, a good record in regards to the service. And it's saying that he studied the Bible there and later on became a preacher. So both of the illustrations are to be crowdy. That's a really old picture that they have up there. Christ. 
chosen he to the church for and he to God chosen he and saved for and he to Christ chosen he to the church for and he to God chosen he and saved for and he to Christ chosen he to the church for and he to God snare you you could have literally they were like metronome you could have right with it syncopate the way they did the vocal do you hear the way it was like the underlying rhythm to the track that was amazing yo i did i so i only heard the beginning of that. i had not heard the end when they they really hit it <sighs> imagine being there for like a live performance you know hearing that because that was sick i didn't know it got that good man in headphones it sounds like f flawless it sounds almost flawless like in the headphones listen to that thing in headphones Yo. and then and then picture the the kick and the snare right with it they are doing the rhythmic syncopation like in that sweet spot man gosh Yo, <laughs> that was hot. Man, I'm not even going to, I'm just tripping out all right, man. Okay, we need to get into this, but I'm, I am like, yo, dang. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, here we go. This is the book that you came here for. This is the book that you came here for, okay? Put on the screen. You're going to learn something today, okay? Let me see here. Dun, 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 uh, all right, here we go. This is the book cover. Someone said, how do you uncover this info? Uh, there's, in some cases, it comes where friends, uh, I'll make a request and they help me find stuff. Or they find something and say, look, I can't really, you know, I'm not trying to bring this out. I don't want the heat. <laughs> but maybe you can do something with this. In this instance is where I had found some other stuff. And then while I was there, it led to this. Specifically, when I discovered the Reverend William Christian book, I searched in the same place for other relevant things and stumbled across this. So I found this because I found the Christian book. And I found the Christian book because I was studying Henderson's blog, the man I interviewed on Saturday. So a lot of it's just God's sovereignty. Look at the date they received this, January 22nd, 1903. So this is a scanned in image of the book that is housed at the Library of Congress. You understand? This is where this is. Do any other copies exist? I imagine the church has some because they do a very good job of keeping records. I have noticed that about them. Um, but you are seeing everything. And now we're getting into uh, as far as the scanned image. This is page six. And then right there in the front is Crowdy, who, of course, they do call Prophet, as you have picked up by now. Prophet W.S. Crowdy, he is called, okay? And uh, we're going to take a look at this and analyze it. 
And there's some interesting things in here. And you know what else is interesting? Some of the stuff that's not in here. Copyrighted December 16th, 1902 in the Office of Library and of Congress, Washington, D.C. So that's when the copyright was, but it looks like they received it in 1903, but the copyright looks like it was 1902. There is the title, The Revelation of God Revealed. The Revelation of God Revealed, the Bible Gospel Told. Set forth by Bishop W.S. Crowdy of the Church of God and Saints of Christ, the World Evangelist. He called himself the World's Evangelist. My teacher is the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Huh. Well, that's interesting. Poor Pilgrim's Progress, which is the very first Hebrew Israelite book ever written by Reverend William Christian, says, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So that's similar. But is that all he says in the Trinitarian language? Actually, it's not. I'm going to take you now to the book we looked at last week. just want to show you a little similarity. Who does he say his teacher is? Who does he say his teacher is? Any guesses? My teachers are God, Christ, and the Holy Ghost. Now, he just puts evangelist. Crowdy put world evangelist. Huh. Huh. Real quick. Yeah, whatever asks a question. No. Nat Turner did not literally identify himself as a Hebrew Israelite. I'm always willing to be wrong about something, but I've went through, there's always more to go through, what I could have Turner's. All he did was draw parallels from the Israelites to the plight of the enslaved people of his time, obviously, people of African descent, the black Americans who were enslaved. We have no evidence he ever said, we are those people in any kind of literal sense. So Hebrews lights will say that, but Turner is not with them. He's not on their side. And they'll say Turner, but they need to give us a quote. Again, willing to be wrong, but they're wrong about not Turner. Notice the I here, because this book's from 1896. Now I'm going to show you something when we get to Crowdy's book. So they have the same teacher, it says. Notice Philadelphia. So by this time, he was no longer in the Midwest or in Oklahoma. But he was in Philadelphia. You got the address there. Philadelphia, the Church of God Publication House, 1420 Fitzwater Street, 1902. See, when they received it, it was 1903. So it was printed in 1902, December, and they received it about a month after in the Library of Congress, 1903. It says they got two copies. This is copy B. Fascinating, right? Now, let me show you a few things in here. Let's take a look at this. Here we go, here we go, here we go. How some people read the Bible, readest thou, song by Bishop W.S. Crowdy. Now, apparently, Crowdy uh, was um, uh, talented and gifted in the area of, of music, as you can, the church has clearly carried on that legacy. And he wrote songs, and this is kind of like a ditty, almost like a poem. And he says that he wrote it here. And I want to show you some things. I have highlighted this for our ease and convenience the Reconstructionist impulse included an impulse that was anti-creedal. Now, I did not grow up in a creedal Christianity, right? I grew up as a Pentecostal. They're not into creeds. Jesus in my Bible, my only creed is Jesus, right? As I've gotten older, I have come to appreciate creeds. In fact, I'm a fan of creeds. And in fact, in my book, where is it? The very end of it is, guess what? A bunch of creeds. This is my book, Apostles' Creed. These are creeds back here in the book. Right. However, obviously, they need to be biblical. And the earliest creeds do properly summarize Christian doctrine, and all Christians should hold to them. If they don't, there's a problem. Being anti-creedal doesn't necessarily mean your beliefs themselves are out of line with the creeds, though. We need to be careful here, okay? I encourage the audience to think critically, biblically, with the mind of a scholar in training whose heart is dedicated to Jesus. That's 1 Peter 3.15. Remember the beginning of the verse. 
Some read to prove a pre-adopted creed, hence understand but little what that they read. For every passage in the book they bend to make it suit that all-important end. Now, his point is good enough, isn't it? Your presuppositions can determine your reading, right? But notice there's also an, a smiled anti-credal imperative. Now, it's true, but if you got one Westism in the back of your mind and to read the Bible, you don't accept the obvious fact that Cornelius, for example, was clearly a Gentile. So, the point is good enough, right? So, you know, bring that out. And uh, here's the next part here. So this is the way he begins. Let me uh, do something here. I'm going to switch this around, put myself on that side, and uh, make this a little bit bigger. Some of you will be happy about that. Some of you will not be happy about that. But it is what it is. There we go. I think that works a little bit better. Okay. Okay. Let's take a look here. So, uh, so many people in these latter days have read the Bible in so many ways. So, again, it's like, hey, there's confusion at this time, and these are the latter days. Again, this is totally part of Restorationism, right? And what I mean by that is Restorationists not only wanted to go back, but they often thought they were in the end times. Joseph Smith, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, hmm? Jehovah's Witnesses, obviously, with their end-of-the-world predictions, and they weren't the only kind of group. Uh, these groups... A lot of them were similar in that. So that is how the book begins. Then we get into, what is that? Well, what, what is that? Huh. You already know what that is. That is the Eye of Providence, a very common Masonic sign. Now, Crowdy and Cherry and... Christian, we're all Masons. Now, a lot of folks were in those days, including white ministers. Now, the Masons were segregated, but I want to draw this out because I'm going to say something right now, and I say this with all due respect to the dead and to Crowdy's people these days, even though I think they have some errors in their devotion. I think Crowdy plagiarized elements of his book from Christian, not just because of he saying he has the same teacher in the same way and ups the ante, goes from evangelist to world evangelist, but the I included. Now, you may say it's a different graphic, but come on, people. Do you think it's an accident that it's right there like that? That's Reverend William Christian's book. That's how he kicks it his off. All right? Crowdy does the same thing with his. Now, notice, though, by the time that Crowdy was establishing his church, Christian already had his first book out. So clearly Christian is first. But I do believe he liberally borrowed, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show that tonight here, okay? From the Church of God and Saints of Christ, greeting, Stone of Truth. What is the Stone of Truth? Well, from listening to current members explain their understanding of the concept of Stone of Truth, it is that prophecy is still well alive. And so the stone of truth that was given to Crowdy is the fact that prophets are still active, specifically him, because he's the one called by God to reestablish the truth. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the beginning of Hebrewism. Between Christian and Crowdy, you're seeing it right here. Look out for the opening, coming destruction. Notice, again, strong apocalyptic vibes, right? All right, you see that? Now, it quotes 2 Timothy 3.16, so believes all the Bible is the Word of God, so he's not like Sakari who decides to kick out Paul from the canon, and that kind of nonsense, right? And so we see that, and he says there's too much speculation and philosophy, so there's that that uh, kind of, well, you, you still see people riding with that, right? Kind of, you know, well, this isn't philosophy, right? But he's just kind of giving his understanding of what the Word of God is and a way to read it and all that. So setting forth premises first. Now, I'm going to show you the highlighted parts because obviously I have went through this book, and that's why I have certain parts highlighted. The copy did not come highlighted, okay? I highlighted it in uh, the, the uh, Acrobat file. Many subjects... Oh, my goodness, this is annoying. Sometimes it does this. Let me look at the live chat real quick and see what people are saying here. All right. Many subjects not often alluded to by press or pulpit are here presented. So it's that old, you're not going to get this thing anywhere else except for here type of vibe, right? You guys, you guys, you guys know about that, right? Let me put myself beside the text here, okay? 
<clears throat> which we are sure will excite in the mind of the reader a new and unwanted interest in the study of the Word of God. Elder Crowdy did not desire the office of a bishop, notwithstanding the Lord knew better what to do than he did. Now, the Bible says that it's uh, a good thing, a noble thing, to desire the office of, uh, of an elder. You know, just saying. For the command was so awakening that one could not resist its calling. So he was sort of compulsed into this. Notice that word awakening there, though, right? He was sent out to call the people of God together into one family as Christ is. Now, that's interesting because this is the idea is, hey, everybody's supposed to be in this joint, right? Everybody's supposed to be in this joint. And you also have Christian with an exclusivist element in his. Now, I think his is in the back where he basically says, hey, our church is like the church. Let me see if it's in the back here, uh, if I'm not mistaken. I know it's in here. I'm not going to spend too much time looking for it if I can't find it off the top. But I believe that it's in the back here where you see that exclusivist strand here. Okay, 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 okay. Let me see here. Da -da. No, So Crowdy's book, by the way, you're going to notice is a little bit longer. I'm not in Crowdy's book right now. I'm doing a comparison here between Reverend William Christian's book and Crowdy's book. So right now I'm in Christian's book, okay? But notice what we're scanning through as we, I go to the end here. It's actually uh, instructions for the marriage ceremony. And that's important because Crowdy has the same thing. Let's see here, okay. Ah, uh, where'd it go? They know the name of fire, the first word of the name of close enough of the church calling the eyes of the person. Um Let me see. I'm gonna try to search this real quick, okay? Well exactly I'm trying to remember exactly how he worded it. Hold on, just a, only church. What does he say? I'm not, you know what, I said I wasn't going to look too much, but there's a place in here where he basically uh, says something along the lines of, like, it's the only true church or something like that. I don't know how, if this, how well this searches the text, though. Let me see here. Let me, like, let me, let me only, let me see here. Just give me one second here. I want to, uh, no, there's too many of these. I don't want to look through church. But there's an exclusivist element in here as well where Christian says a similar thing as if, like, this is, like, the, you know, church to, to look at, okay? Because you see a, a very similar thing here with Crowdy. Yeah. If I look through church, it's going to be too long. But you're going to have to trust me on that one. Okay. So there's back. Now we're in Crowdy's book again, okay? Okay, we're in Crowdy's book again. Look what he says. He was sent out to call the people of God together into one family as Christ is, but that's why he's the world's evangelist. But one head that there should also be one body in Christ. God has commanded me to tell his people to come out of Babylon. Huh? So the paganism of the Christian church, and they should not be partakers of her sins nor receive the plagues. Search the scriptures. Fascinating, right? Fascinating. So, Stone of Truth, again, I reiterated that is his point that he can be a modern-day prophet, and look at what he says about himself here. I, William S. Crowdy, am a prophet of God, sent to the whole world, but it seemed very hard for me to understand that I must talk to the general world at first, when afterwards I heard a voice speaking unto me, saying, as he had so said to Ezekiel, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, and to all nations of the earth that hath rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me, even unto this very day, for they are imprudent children and stiff-hearted. I do send thee unto them, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, not Elder Crowdy, nor any other man or minister, but thus saith the Lord God, who is supreme above all and all. So there he rec recalls this calling, Right, or this calling that he's saying is directly from God, similar to what Ezekiel got, and he quotes God here. Crowdy is quoting God. Look what he says. Then said he unto me, "Gird up thy loins and arise and speak unto them all that I have commanded thee. Be not dismayed at their faces, lest I confound thee before them." 
And I believe that is, these are direct quotations from Scripture, I believe. He is appropriating them unto himself here, right? For the Lord has made me through his word as a desired city and an iron pillar and a wall against the whole land, and they shall fight against me but shall not prevail. But the people will try to dodge the word by saying there are not any more prophets now. So he's saying you're going to try to say there's not any more prophets, like, you know, maybe cessationism or something like that. But the stone of truth, member is that there are. Or that they are all done away with. Then the question arises, who did away with them? They will say Christ did away with them. Then he goes on to say that that's not the case. He specifically points to the Apostle Paul. So notice he is not anti-Pauline like some of the groups these days. And he goes to point to Paul to say, look, if Paul was a prophet after the fact, I can be a prophet after the fact. So I, William S. Crowdy, was shown by seven keys the work of our God. Now, let me stop there. I made a mistake briefly in my interview with Henderson uh, Shelton on Saturday where I missed. I don't know why I did this. I put the seven keys on the screen briefly uh, before I got into a prophecy by, by Cherry when I was talking to an ex-member of Cherry's congregation. And I said, yeah, the seven keys. But I don't know why I did that. That wasn't Cherry's thing. It was Crowdy's thing. So if you watch that interview, when I bring up the seven keys, it was incorrect to briefly associate it uh, with with Cherry. Here it is, okay? I had a lot saved, and I had that in the wrong folder was what happened, okay? Uh, work of our God pertaining to our salvation. So notice, he's not just saying he, the, that the message that, that black folks are the Israelites is getting restored. Ladies and gentlemen, and this is not just here. This is not implied. This is something that they say in their documents and in their songs. Church of God and Saints of Christ, they believe that he restored unto the earth the plan of salvation. This is important. Joseph Smith also claimed that there was gospel restoration. This is important, which I shall mention later on in this book, which if the one who reads it and will do it will surely reach eternal life without fail. For Jesus' words are as true as the rock of ages. Search the scriptures. I want to I want to I want to show you this. I want to show you this. He's saying God showed him seven keys, and they pertain to salvation. And there are keys that you have to read and do, and then you'll have eternal life. And he says those are the words of Jesus. So notice this. This is salvific. This is important. Church of God, song by Bishop W.S. Crowdy. I know that you are the shepherd and watching over the sheep. Jesus is the captain, says shepherd, follow me. So... You see there that uh, he had songs and he had a song and he would put it inside of his book. And uh, I think they still see some of sing some of his songs uh, today. Repentance is the first step to the kingdom. Okay, okay, okay. He goes through the Bible and says that, where why he believes that and what he means by that, right? But can I show you something? Can I show you something? Look what's highlighted here. For when the sinner asks the preacher now his age, what shall he do? He tells him to come and give him their hand and God their hearts and then knee down at the mourner's bench and pray. And those words are not in the Bible in that way. Then you tell the sinner to pray and he has not repented yet. Then to whom does he pray? Some may say to the father, he has not repented of his sins. The devil is his father. Before sinners can pray, they must repent and be sorry for their sins. As David says, I will declare mine iniquity. I will be sorry for my sins. Are you paying attention? Are you tracking? Remember, us Calvinists, we're not big fans for the most part of the sinner's prayer. We kind of say, stop asking Jesus into your heart type of thing, right? I'm not as anti-sinner prayer as a lot of Calvinists, but I get the impulse of stop asking Jesus into your heart. That's that revivalist tendency that permeates a lot of Christianity and I think gives people a false assurance. Revivalist, revivalism was going on in his day as well, and so he bucks up against it. But who else said this exact same thing already? Reverend William Christian. He specifically wrote about this, okay? I'm going to show you where here if I can find it, okay? I'm going to show you where. Actually, I'm going to show you just in the table of contents. Now, it seems clear that Crowdy met Christian, heard Christian, perhaps read Christian's book. I think most likely he had somehow procured a copy or it was indelibly stamped upon his mind because he literally borrows stuff. 
Look at chapter 6 of Reverend William Christian's book. Sorry, I took you to the Masonic diagram on accident there. It went too, went too far. But I'm going to show you uh, what he does in chapter 6. Are you ready? So I am not in Crowdy's book right now. I am back in Reverend William Christian's book. And I'm going to show you chapter 6. Chapter 3, by the way, is the money chapter in here. That's where he gets into exegesis that shows the ancient Israelites were black and and, and then makes a, a, a connection there. I'm having trouble navigating the book. It's getting a little irritating. I might need to uh, might need to do something here. See, it's if I do it the other way, I have to put the JPEGs like on the screen, and it's a ton of work to JPEG a PDF out and then put up the specific JPEG at the right time. Now, if I had like a, I don't know, producer or something, that's the kind of thing I would have them do, and it'd be all set nice and tidy, but I don't. So here you are with vocab hanging out. By the way, please subscribe to the channel and hit that button, that bell, so that you can get notifications. A lot of you are subscribed and do not get the notifications. You got to make sure you hit the bell on the top that says receive all notifications, okay? So not just the one that's like, oh, you know, some notifications. Can you please do that for me? And can you like this video, please? And can you share it? And if you're watching, I would like you to comment and perhaps even super chat, please. Now there's a thing called super thanks where it's not during a video, but it's after a video. Okay. Okay. Here we are. Here we are. There we go. I want to please stop. Please stop. Please stop. Please stop. You're going too far. I just saw the repentance thing. Okay. Okay. I don't, I don't understand why it, why it operates in the way that it does. I need to figure out what the deal is with that. Okay. So in Reverend William Christian's book, he also has the anti sinner's prayer vibe. And he also says, Hey, don't be going up to this mourner's bench doing all of that, right? Did I say chapter 7? My bad, it's chapter 6. So here we are in chapter 6. Remember what we just read from Crowdy. I know it was that we were there a second ago because it took me a second to get here. I apologize for that. But here we are in chapter 6. When I'm, you know, doing stuff like that, just hang out with people in the chat. We got great mods and a great squad. So you can just talk to them, and I think you'll enjoy yourself. Are you reading this? They have to repent and then pray. So he makes a big deal about how you have to repent first before praying. Read these notes closely on repentance, and you will see that they say repent all right, but they don't say pray and repent. All this praying to repent and this mourner's bench business and going out into the woods to hunt God is all a humbug and ignorance of the deepest die. I am going to highlight that because you need to, you see that? He specifically brings up the mourner's bench. Now let's go back over to Crowdy. Do you think it's an accident that they both have a chapter on the fact that you need to repent before you pray? Look at this. God, their hearts, and then kneel down at the mourner's bench and pray. Huh. It, it's, it's difficult to think that Crowdy was not aware of Christian's work. Before sinners can pray, they must repent and be sorry for their sins, David says. But look at this. Ministers say that sinners must pray and get religion, but the Spirit says that religion is a duty. So I want you to remember that, okay, about this whole get religion thing, okay? I do think it's funny the way that a Reverend William Christian put it. And the point here is not um, that some of what they're saying is not incorrect or something like that, but it's that it seems pretty clear that Crowdy got some stuff from Christian. Look at what's highlighted on your screen. Now, when sinners ask the preachers what they must do to be saved, they tell them to come to the mourner's bench and go and get religion. That's Christian. Look at Crowdy. Ministers say that sinners must pray and get religion, but the Spirit says that religion is a duty. I think he mildly plagiarized Christian. Not, not just this. Notice how I have shown a number of instances where it's clearly 
clearly influenced. Amir says, wait, he's raging against Charles Finney's rubbish. I think you might be right of that kind of thing, right? But do you guys see this? There's Crowdy. Ministers say that sinners must pray and get religion. That's a very specific phrase. The Spirit says that religion is a duty. And he's already mentioned the Mars bitch. Right. Now, when that asks for you to do a say, they say, we're gonna now we're going to go back to Crowdy's book. The way to remember is Crowdy, the, the copy is bright white over here. All right. But the other one is is like a brown color. So Crowdy's book is like this bright white. Looks like a, like, like, a, be a, like a photocopy or something. And so that's how you know where we are. And so then he says a lot of similar stuff here. Says a lot of similar stuff here. And look again. There he's got it in the orange bench. You guys, you guys see this? Da, 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 da. I will not hearken to them, children. Only look to the cloud of witnesses we have against running the sinner to the mourners bench to pray. Now, I know it was a common phrase, so it's not just because, um, you know, the idea of the mourners bench per se. But I don't think it can be termed accidental because the topics that Christian covers are the same topics that Crowdy covers. Now, here's a song for pilgrims that he has. You know, it's a song for pilgrims that he has. You see that? That's what that is. Now he talks about baptism. Well, what was one of the topics that Christian talked about? You better believe it. It, it, it seems almost impossible to believe, but two books that came out within six years of each other uh, both basically dealt with the same exact topics. Do you, you guys understand? Why is it going to anything with... It's not accurately searching the text. Okay, so here we are. I need to find the baptism chapter here. Because guess what? I, let me just show you in the index. This is in Reverend William Christian's book. You ready? Oh, by the way, I found it. I knew it was somewhere in here. Remember I told you there was an exclusivist element about what Reverend William Christian said that Crowdy also had? The Church of the Living God, this is Christian's book, is the right church. The right church. And all members ought to have their feet washed in the church. By the way, Crowdy's also going to advocate feet washing, if I'm not mistaken. Fascinating, right? And look, this is, again, crowd. this is Christian before Crowdy. There's no such thing as getting religion. Huh. Now look at this. People are free, sprinkling or pouring or born of water. People are free. So there he talks about, what does he talk about in chapter 15? He talks about baptism. So that's that's the same topic that you've, you've so you've got him talking about baptism. And that's the same topic that Crowdy is going to address now. Again, how is it they're addressing the same topics except for one important thing I'm going to show you here? Well, actually, there's a few things, but there's one important. Look, member says people, look at this. I mean, even the language is similar as they discuss baptism. Christ sets people free, free from what? See that? This is in Christian's book. Okay. And now here we're going to talk about baptism from Crowdy's book. I don't see how one can contend himself to the applying of the water or pouring when Jesus says, so plain to be born of water. Okay, so they're advocating uh, a baptism that I, as a Baptistic person, would agree. And look at what he says here. And this is in Reverend William Christian's book. What does he say? Sprinkling or pouring water, I don't think will do according to my Christian belief and scriptural proofs. Again, this is not about disagreeing. It's just saying, how is it that Crowdy is addressing the identical subjects as Christian before him and using some very similar language? We don't have to call it plagiarism, but I do think we need to say it's highly, it's highly likely, right, that uh, Crowdy was uh, was influenced by Christian. Okay, you see this? So they're going through it there. So, da, 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 you know, been sprinkled otherwise, and then and so that's this is Christian talking about it there. Sorry, I'm going back and forth. Sometimes I'm getting confused which one I'm on. Okay, and a lot of these are somewhat similar as far as this proof text, but I mean I I agree, you know, with what they're saying there basically. 
And here's where there's like a transition. I want to show you this transition. See this at right here? It just begins with a bunch of Q&A. Almost like a catechism without any spaces or breaks. So here, notice you've got proof text. But from then on, it becomes question, answer, question, answer. Notice all the question marks. So it's like a catechism for their understanding of baptism. Now, I'm not saying this plagiarized, okay? I'm just saying that I think he borrowed heavily from Christian. And according to Landing, he uh, talked about Reverend William Christian's kind of catechism to show that the Jews were black, is the way he put it. And I would love to see more of it because I wonder if what he writes here is very similar to what Crowdy wrote in his book. And I want to show you this uh, about what Crowdy writes here, okay, in regards to his church. Are you ready? Give none offense, neither to the Jews, nor to the Greeks, nor to the church of God. 1 Corinthians 10, 32. Notice he doesn't say so-called or anything like that. You know, he seems almost to accept Jews or Jews. With all these witnesses, yet the preachers will say to their congregations that there is no such church written in the Bible as the church of God. And have the audacity to ask me, how long has the church been organized? So he's saying, I guess he's saying people didn't like the name or something. And then they say, how long have you been around? You know, kind of saying you're a newcomer. It seems as if it was organized in Paul's day. For he says, I am the least of the apostles because I did persecute the church of God. Okay, he's making a direct connection there uh, between what he's doing in that other day. And the, and if you read the book, the, the indication is that it was lost, basically, and now he is reestablishing it. They still uh, celebrate reestablishment day. Now here's a song for the church of God, right, where they talk about that. Da, 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 da. The day with the Lord had made. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Now, Christian seems to say, yeah, the Sabbath day was right, but you don't got to really do it on that day, so we're all good. Crowdy goes to the Sabbath day, so he seems to be Sabbatarian, whereas Christian wasn't. So it becomes more Judaic Christianity than it was with Christian, uh, Reverend William Christian. Here's what Crowdy writes. So we're in Crowdy's book, just to make sure it's clear everyone knows that, all right? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. This seems like it brings forth death to the sectarian churches and to the world in general. So, again, this bashing of other churches is very common in these elements when they start up something new. Joseph Smith, what did he say? He says he asked the personages that appeared to him by the sacred grove, which one should I join? None. Creeds, abominations, professors, corrupt, liars, abominable, you know? Not as strong language, but brings forth death. They all believe that you that they keep to all the rest of the commandments, but you can make them so awfully mad when you ask them about the Sabbath day. Notwithstanding, James says, if a man has kept the whole law, and yet offend on one point, he shall be guilty of all of them. So people get really upset, Crowdy is saying, when he asks them about the Sabbath day. So you see, all the denominations with the world with them refuse and reject the seventh day, which is Saturday. Crowdy is strawmanning his opponents. All denominations do not reject the Sabbath day. There are plenty of churches, even during that time, that did some Saturday stuff. You know, but look, everybody except for us refuse and reject the seventh day, which is Saturday. And now he goes back into the Q&A. See this? Sabbath question, question, question. It's kind of a catechism for the Sabbath. You see that? Now, remember, we understand Christian freedom. If you want to do your thing on the seventh day, go ahead and get down. You're out of step with Christian tradition, but that doesn't mean you're out of step with the Word of God per se. Although I think the, the Bible does clearly show that they were worshiping on the eighth day, as they understood it very early on, even in the pages of the New Testament itself. But the Apostle Paul and the early church, I believe, rightfully so, up until they got really anti-Judaic said there's Christian liberty and freedom here Christians should not drink wine nor any strong drink and then there's a Q&A right well guess what guess who else had a chapter about wine and strong drink now it's just odd that in a 
two Hebrew Israelite books this close that they address such similar subjects. That's all I'm saying. Okay, so here's the index of Reverend William Christian's book. And uh, what does he do here? What does he do here? Wait, where's the part about drinking? Oh, there we go. So this is just straight up anti, right? No drinking. Look at chapter 5 within the index of Reverend William Christian's book. You guys see that? I'm going to highlight it. I believe it is wrong for any Christian to drink wine or strong drinks in the church or out. That means no you know, wine during communion. And water ought to be used in the Lord's Supper. Tobacco using and snuff dipping, I think, is too dirty a thing for Christians. That's actually Reverend William Christian's, um, you know, chapter title, basically. And notice how he says the same thing. Christians should not drink wine nor any other strong drink. And then he goes ahead and has explained that, right? And look at 14. Should the churches of God give wine as a sacrament? Hosea 9, 4, 15. Obviously, he's saying, says no. Why can't they give wine? Joel 1, 5. So he says no, right? You see that? So the answer is no, you cannot. And there he says that, um, it's after all the miracle of Cana. Cana. And uh, let's take a look here at this. Uh, 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 uh. It talks about their understanding of the Lord's table there. See that? Every church sing a song when they get through drinking wine. So no wine. So what instead? Take bread and water. Well, what did Reverend William Christian advocate for? Water. Jehovah's Witnesses do the same thing, by the way. Although you can't take their communion at Jehovah's Witnesses unless you're one of the elect, and they are all dead. So I don't know if anyone's allowed to take it. So he says, you know, it's water, and that's how far back. It goes all the way back, and that's what we should do. See the Q&A there? So again, how is it that they're addressing identical subjects, right? I'm not going to go through all this, obviously. We're, we're going through Reverend Crowdy's book, Reverend William Crowdy's book. But look, foot washing a commandment. Remember I showed you in Reverend William Christian's book, what else does he advocate? He advocates foot washing. I mean, do we have to keep on going to show that Crowdy was influenced? Was influenced, right? Crowdy was influenced by Christian? Isn't it obvious? Let me see if I can find the foot washing ceremony. I think it's the very end, if I'm not mistaken. Come on. Come on now. It doesn't search the text very well. Yeah, it doesn't search very well. But he advocates it uh, towards the end here. Almost like a thing kind of we might describe as an afterthought. Maybe go back and watch last Sunday's show and you'll see, because I don't want to spend most time on Christian's book, although I could not. Netsugami, block me and I will shame you that all of you didn't know my coming. What in the world? Why are we getting the weirdos out in the live chat tonight? What is happening here? Like, seriously, I don't even know what's going on with you, right? So this is in Reverend William Christian's book. And if you go through it, he does talk about foot washing. Okay. Um, but notice what he says. He's not a Sabbatarian in the same way that uh, Crowdy was. So don't ask me, he says. Maybe that's one of the guys who supposedly got mad. Don't ask me if I keep the Sabbath, but ask me if I keep the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, anyways, I'm not going to show you all the part about the foot washing, but it's in there. And if you were there last Sunday, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, back over to Crowdy's book, which is called Revelation of God, which, again, I have uploaded in the Gospel Discussion Group. The link is pinned in the URL. You've got to request membership to get in there. And then when you get in there, you can join us and go to the file section and download the book for free. It was published in 1902, and the Library of Congress received it in 1903, and it is still in their archives, which is how I managed to grab a hold of it. And uh, now we have the world's second oldest known Hebrew Israelite book, although you may notice it's very light on the black Israelism. That's because that is one of the things he left out. But notice... Yet another topic that Christian directly addressed, and he has the same conclusion here. 
as Reverend William Christian. It's difficult because Reverend William Christian and Reverend William S. Crowdy do have the same first name, although to my understanding, Reverend William Christian uh, had the title chief, but he never had the title prophet. You must be taught of God the disciples' prayer. So there you see an advocate for the Lord's prayer kind of almost like over and against other prayers, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Obviously, we're pro-Lord's prayer, but the point by showing that is that in Reverend William Christian's book, he had the same thing. I don't know what's going on, but I'm having trouble navigating through the PDF pretty badly of the Christian PDF, which, again, published in 1896. That file was also in the Gospel Discussion Group, and, uh, and uh, people talk about the blood moon tonight. Oh, my goodness. Oh, boy. Did you guys enjoy that interview on Saturday, though, with the member, uh, former member of SFFS Cherry's congregation? It shows you how hot uh, black Israelism was in Philly, because notice that's where Crowdy ended up settling. And then you've also got the fact that Cherry was there. That wasn't the only one. There's a whole bunch. Philly's a quite a hotbed for black Israelism, even in the old days there. And uh, anyways, uh, it seems that Christian, Reverend William Christian is not real fond of other prayers or maybe spontaneous praying. It's not 100% clear to me, but he's definitely fond of the Lord's prayers if that's something you need and doesn't fully explain it in a way that makes sense to me. But if you go through the index, you'll see it there. And uh, where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Oh, yeah, yeah, there you go. It seems as if maybe it's against the impulse of like, what they might have heard from Roman Catholics, to be frank with you, about the idea of vain repetition or something like that. And then some of the Catholics may say, hey, what? we got to understand, these were Protestants, these were Baptists. Now it's, it's skipping through. It's not stopping where I wanted it to stop. But did you see it briefly where it did say what I said, which is don't do the vain repetition. Uh, be taught, Christ told us what to pray, is what it said. It's, it's not stopping. It's This is incredibly irritating the way that this uh, PDF is responding uh, to the controls. But my point is, it was there. I don't know if you saw it when it flashed by the screen. I'm having trouble getting back to it. But in the index, he says, hey, don't pray these things. Christ taught us what to pray. And uh, again, we're not anti-Lord's Prayer. We're just pointing out stuff. I'm just trying to have a better understanding, a deeper understanding. And notice how Crowdy has the same uh, similar thing. And I've read the both books in their entirety more than once. That's why I know where a lot of this stuff is, but I am not having a great time navigating between the two. Even now, I'm trying to switch over. So again, what are we going through? We're going through the book written by William S. Crowdy. His middle name is Saunders. William Saunders Crowdy, S-A-U-N-D-E-R-S, C-R-O-W-D-Y, uh, often called Prophet Crowdy. And we're going through his book and reading uh, about what he said here. And I want to see if I can find this. Let me see if I can find this. There's a number of other things I wanted to show you, uh, but I'm not sure. Yeah, you know, I think, okay, now we're back there. Now we're on Crowdy's book again, so I'm going to hold off on that for a second. You must be taught of God the disciples' prayer. Hey, shout out to Michael Williams. How's it going, bro? Man, we're supposed to link up, man. I've been trying to get with you. Now this next week is going to be busy for me. I don't know how easy it's going to be to link up, but... Please, man, hit me back. We gotta, we gotta do this TV show, and we gotta, I gotta get that video from you. And there's a couple other things that need to happen. My man, come on now. You must be breathed upon with prayer, and then received into the church of God with a holy kiss. So, there's some old illustrations that show the holy kiss uh, that you can find in some newspapers. But they also advocated the holy ki kiss. So there's a element of maybe literalism in these congregations and they felt that that was something that was lost as well so they did the greeting with the holy kiss now again notice what christian had said already about religion and look what crowdy says here religion is not to get but it is a duty it is something to do all the time again notice the similarity in the phraseology about not getting religion all right and again i even think they might be taking that like a little uncharitable as if pe preachers of the day were advocating you know um <laughs> You put it down, you pick it up type of thing. I mean, obviously, there's always people that would advocate for something like that. This is Moses' law or laws. So he talks about that. So this is a little more Judaic in its orientation, a little more Old Testament-centered than Reverend William Christian was. And you can see it there. 
And, you know, it does not seem like the modern Church of God and Saints of Christ gave the nod to the Trinity in the way that it seems that Crowdy did, as far as saying whose teachers were and that kind of thing. I don't see any Trinitarian potential in the modern day group that I do. Now, Crowdy did address some subjects that Christian didn't address. I don't see anything in Christian about meat law, but here you go about that and then talking about it. And uh, this is interesting. Again, you see the, the, the push towards kind of a Judaizing tendency. Notice, though, again, we're really just in a Q&A here at this point. It's got even got numbers here, right? So this could be something where people would ask it and somebody would have to know the verse. Almost like an early precept packet, you know? Although, you know, Christians have always done Q&A, catechism type thing. Well, for a long time, I'll put it that way. And just talking about different sins, envy and jealousy is a sin. Da, 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 da. That's why I'm saying this is not some duplication of Christian's work, but I'm saying there's some similarities. Care for ministers, he goes, okay, okay, okay. So we're just going through the whole crowdy book, which you can download and get for yourself. You know what's missing? Black Israelism. William S. Crowdy, one of the earliest Hebrew Israelites there was, didn't call himself that. He called himself a black Jew who had already went out preaching all over black Israelism does not include it in his book in 1902. Isn't that fascinating? So yes, it's a book written by a Hebrew Israelite, but it doesn't really have black Israelism in it. It has the Judaizing tendency though. Let us pray. Let us pray. So there's the Lord's prayer and notice how also it was about marriage there and there's burial ceremonies. So it, it talks about which sort of, this is almost like a liturgy in the back of the book. So for the ministers that he sets up in the church, uh, and that is very similar to what Poor Pilgrim's Progress has at the end. Although I don't think I'm going to be able to get in and out of Poor Pilgrim's Progress. So we're probably actually just going to, we're going to have to stay out of it. This is Poor Pilgrim's Progress. Let me try to go to the end because it has a similar section. I don't know if it's going to properly go. I've been somewhat frustrated with this by today, as you can tell. Uh, yeah, look, chapter 17, see it on the screen? It might flip off real quick. Talks about burial for the dead. And before that, it talked about marriage. So he has a little liturgy in the back of his book. Now, going back to Crowdy's book, look, there you got his thing about burial for the dead. Now, here's some interesting stuff in here. What does David say about the dead praising the Lord? Psalm 115, 7, 17. Not a word, Psalm 6, 5. Huh. Crowdy seems to be advocating soul sleep. What's may, what must take place before the dead can praise the Lord, our Lord? It, it says eight Lord, but obviously that's a typo. He seems to be advocating soul sleep. Can someone in the live chat talk about soul sleep and all that? Because it looks like that's what's going on. You know, do you guys understand that? Do you see that? It seems like he's advocating soul sleep and perhaps investigative judgment. Somewhat similar ideas to the modern day Seventh day Adventist. I don't know because he doesn't really elaborate, but look at this. How far will this investigation extend? I think they use the same verses. What have we for proof that the dead is not in heaven? So, scripture says to be absent from body, be present from the Lord, and other, other scriptures, right? He's against that. Crowdy was a soul sleep advocate. Now, that is a heterodox a doctrine. Some people might call it heresy, but I would hope they would say it's not damnable heresy, but it is incorrect, and Crowdy seemed to advocate for soul sleep. And then he gets into the question of a living soul, which is something that Jehovah's Witnesses do. They get into the Hebrew word sometimes, the J-dubs do, Crowdy doesn't necessarily do it here, and they have a weird doctrine about it. And uh, I've never fully understood why it's important to them, but he seems to get into it at the very end of the book. But notice, there's no black Israelism in this book. He left it out, even though he had clearly seen Christian's book, was already preaching it at that time. It's not in the book. And he puts the kind of the index in the back of the book instead of the front of the book. But there it is. That is the book. Yeah? Fascinating stuff, right? I would love to hear your thoughts now, and I will take questions from you, and I'm going to show you guys some other stuff here in a second. Okay. Let's see here. Let's see here. Yes, might be. Crowdy started the Church of God and Saints of Christ. That is correct. Okay, I'll put you over there. Thank you, Timothy. I appreciate that, brother. 
put that on the screen as well. I used to believe in the BHI doctrine, but thanks to Christians out there like Vocab, helped me see it was wrong. Well, I'd love to hear more about your story. Joel speaks. Amir with the Crowdy impersonation. Vocab always hit that. I was sitting in the morning at the diner. Oh. <laughs> Yep, 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 yep. I know what you're talking about. That little hum, sometimes I do. Rebecca, yes, good question. The answer is yes. Again, we're not necessarily anti that, um, but just kind of making sure that people don't have an improper view of it. You know? Let's see. Oh, wow. Somebody wants to do. Actually, if we did a Hebrew Israelize me, um, what it would probably be called is Judaize me. Probably called Judaize me. Some people may say, well, that should be for the old, if you're going to do that with the Old Testament uh, believers or Jews, right? I'd like to see vocab cover the Mason Bible someday. I don't think I've seen the Mason Bible. Is there a Mason Bible? Brother Chris says it used to be a Mason, but you can't be. Da -da. I'm just looking through the comments real quick here. I'm going back. These are old comments. I'm not going to be able to hit all the old comments. So if you have a question or comment here, put Q. Even if it's just a comment you want me to read, put Q, capital Q, colon. And then if it's a question, hit that question mark. Right? If you could do that, please. I would appreciate that. I would appreciate that. Okay. Okay. I have some other stuff I do want to show you, but we are running out of time here. How much longer do you guys want to go? Um, I do have some interesting stuff. We have went through the world's second oldest Hebrew Israelite book by Crowdy called Revelation of God Revealed. It is now in the public. I think what might be important is to give you a little bit of um, some background of Crowdy from um, the perspective of his folks because you kind of learn more about them. But before I do that, let me briefly give you more information about Crowdy himself. This is from a lecture. Uh, Hello, everyone. Channel, and Judaism and the African American experience. And he covers a bunch of different folks. You know, you see Cherry there. And I thought he had a real helpful quick section there on Crowdy. I'm going to play that now and uh, just kind of get out of the way. I'm actually going to get rid of myself here. And let's just listen to this because I want to put this in historical context. So the Church of God and Saints of Christ, founded by William Crowdy in Kansas, in Lawrence, Kansas. He had this interesting... So notice, this guy does a good job, but he makes a mistake there. Uh, did you hear that? He said, found in Lawrence, Kansas. Well, it wasn't in Lawrence, Kansas. It, he did establish some church... Well, it depends what he... You know what? Let me, let me stop. I before said it was inaccurate to say Lawrence, Kansas. It appears they may have started the church there first, but the vision was in Guthrie, Oklahoma. So when I said Hughley was wrong, I may have been speaking speaking too soon about saying that. I think a charitable interpretation is not necessarily when the revelation began, but when the church was established. And I do believe that may have been in Lawrence, Kansas. So I apologize to Hughley on that part and to this man if that's what they're getting at and if that's correct. I may have been wrong about that. So, so I said that. Uh, I think I understand now what they were saying. I was under the impersonation they were talking about, or impression, uh, that they were talking about actually like where he got the vision. But I think they were talking about when the church was established, and I do believe that's right. So I apologize for that. I uh, don't want to call anyone an error if they're not to this man and to, her, to, to Hughley. But notice here what's on the screen. It's Cherry. We're going to go into Crowdy now. Notice what it says, though? Divine vision. Crowdy also has a divine vision, and I like this guy because he accurately, quickly summarizes Crowdy's vision. And I think it's weird, man. Listen to this. And no photographs. He did combine um, the, the feast of the Passover, a Jewish celebration, with the centrality of Jesus Christ. He died in 1965, and his son Benjamin Cherry has led the organiza organization. We also have the Church of God and Saints of Christ, founded by William Crowdy in Kansas, in Lawrence, Kansas. He had this interesting vision um, where he saw tables 
with labels of churches on that table, but the table was also covered in filthy vomit. And then he, small, then he saw a small, clean white table with the name of his church. He called this congregation's Tabernacles, and eventually had 20 different fellowships throughout the state of Kansas. And then New York City established a community with over a thousand members. And he had missionary outposts in the Caribbean and South Africa. He was referred to as the Black Elijah. And he called African Americans members of the Lost Tribes of Israel. He did follow the Jewish Sabbath, which begins Friday evening to Saturday evening. Services are led by a rabbi and assisted by a cantor, which you do see in Judaism today, with readings on the Torah, the first five books of the Hebrew Jewish Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. They did celebrate Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, the holiest day of the year in Judaism, and then Passover or Pesach, the celebration of the liberation and, del and deliverance out of Egyptian slavery, um, in the Exodus event. So we definitely blended Judaism with Christianity by also asserting that Jesus Christ is the model of ethical conduct, but he never really referred to Jesus as the Messiah, though. And he taught seven keys about the church, about the forbidding wine, using unleavened bread and water for communion, foot washing as a commandment like Jesus did on Holy Thursday during the Last Supper or his, Jesus celebrating the Passover, the disciples' prayer, he must be breathed upon with a holy kiss, and definitely a focus on the Ten Commandments. And again, there's a network of 32 tabernacles in the U.S., the Caribbean, South Africa, and England. Next up, we have the Commandment Keepers Congregation of All right, going to get a couple questions here, and that's a good just kind of put in context, <clears throat> understanding Crowdy, because, you know, we found this book. Would Hebrews lights, especially one West, acknowledge their lineage tracing back to Karate, Cherry, and or Christian if someone brought up these works to them? Well, you got to understand, I humbly submit that uh, most Hebrews lights didn't know these works existed. So when you bring them up to them, there will be brand new, fresh information. Now, most Hebrews lights who have been around for a little bit have heard about Karate and Cherry, although most of them don't know anything about him unless they are in their respective congregations. And uh, I think that they deem it usually, if they're outside of those congregations, as irrelevant because they think that the first Hebrews Light book basically is the Bible. They bought into their own press and that Hebrews Lights, have, some of them have always known this information basically in some way or another. And... Um, they also jump the gun and say people like Vesey, Prosser, Turner, Equiano were already espousing Hebrew Israelism when they were not. It's just they weren't. And uh, we see where it started. And there could always come new information forward, right? And if it was, then we would reevaluate. That's what historical research does. You reevaluate your thesis if new documents or information come to light. But as of now, we can say that the Christian apologist side has a better understanding of the history of the movement than any Hebrews light I've ever heard talk about it. That doesn't mean about every element. Obviously, there's people in One West who know more, and obviously people in Church of God and Saints of Christ. I'm talking about the average Hebrews light you run into. And so that's what's up with that. Looks like people were signing off, which I appreciate everybody coming down. Listen. Uh, we are reinstating the freestyles for the live streams. So if we hit $50, I will rock a freestyle, right? But it didn't happen today. So I need to announce it uh, now more and more to let people know. So it's not going to happen to today or tonight because the way we do it is if you give $50 in the Super Chat. I do a freestyle for people who are into that could have fun. I did load up some new beats. And I just said, man, we need to start doing freestyles again. So I got a bunch of beats ready for next time we do it. Although it's going to be tricky because probably the next show we're going to do, if it ends up happening this way, is going to be on this guy's manifesto. Although I'm still looking about the best way to do that. And Push Push says, have you had conversions of Hebrews like to Christian? Yes, a ton. We've done a number of shows on that. Now there's, I, when I first started, I would do a show on every convert I met. But now I don't because there's so many. I would just be doing interviews all the time, you know. 
So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate you coming through, getting into this this uh, important information. Let's uh, peace out, say, uh, join us again where we make apologetics fun again. And uh, it's been a beautiful night and much love to y'all. Shalom.